welcome warmly welcome for everybody uh, there in Finland and maybe someone from Estonia and then uh, the presenters we have here today we are in Helsinki in Bangkok Thailand where I am at the moment and Thomas is in Hong Kong where he lives so uh, my name is Harri Suominen I know some of the participants personally and uh, the ones I don't yet know uh, looking forward to meet you someday for sure and uh, maybe Tuomas, you, you can share the screen. You have uh, some some slides there. But uh, basically, a uh, little bit about what I have been doing. Uh, Ten years ago, I st started my first company, and it, it's called Asia Exchange. And uh, we have been sending thousands of students to study in Asia. And now, uh, a year ago, we joined our forces uh, with Peter and and Thomas and, uh, and uh, came up with education. So education is uh, one uh, kind of influential operator who is now trying to open up uh, the Finnish higher education for the world. And uh, today we are about to talk that what we have been doing in India, what kind of opportunities there is, not only related to education, but uh, like smart cities and, uh, and uh, many other areas that uh, Finland has something to offer. So uh, I let now my colleague Thomas to a little bit share shortly a background information about education. Yes, so hello, it's Thomas here from Hong Kong and warm welcome to everybody. And uh, maybe before going to uh, India and Andhra Pradesh, we could quickly review uh, what education does and what we have been doing the, during the past 12 months. So uh, everybody knows why Finland, first of all, so we don't only have the best education on the planet, but we are also the happiest, <laughs> happiest people. Just a second, please. Yeah, it was in the news yesterday, I think the Washington Post mentioned it, uh, the happiest country in the world. It's, but also uh, the... Everywhere. So it's good. Yes. Yes, it's basically everywhere in the news news at the moment. But yes, we are of course the best country to live in, the best for the expats and etc. and etc. And that's why so many people want to also move to Finland, not only to live but also to study and 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 work later on. So our aim is to have 150,000 students in Finland by 2020, as well as 30,000 students in Estonia. So that's our goal. And uh, there's huge opportunities in higher education. And, and, and we are talking about uh, some estimations. So there's estimated to be 262 million uh, students in higher education by 2025. And, and most of them will be actually from Asia, more than 50%. And uh, India is especially like a huge opportunity for all of us as there's more than 550 million people below the age of 25 already at the moment so people are eagerly looking for uh, university degrees not only at home country but also uh, overseas and, and, and basically what we have at EduNation, so we are having a smooth application process, which is supported by AI technology. And uh, we are like the bridge builder between the students and the university and different countries. So we have very like uh, uh, innovative marketing. We have been doing student recruitment already more than 10 years at ASECJ. Now we are doing it at EduNation from a different angle. And, and we have changed also some of the application requirements so that it's like uh, more easy to apply to Finnish universities. Of course, in collaboration with our partner universities, but it still needs like lots of attention because the competition is also very high among different countries and, and many countries like, let's say, the English speaking countries have been doing student recruitment and education export already for decades. So, so we really need to benchmark a lot and, and not only those English speaking countries, but also like, let's say, uh, is uh, Sweden, which is our neighbor in the West. So for example, at 
Uppsala University, which is among the top 100 in the world. Uh, basically, there's no like any English language requirements, for example, for uh, Indian students to apply or, or GMAT or, or similar like application requirements that we usually still have in Finland. But uh, we are, of course, trying to provide AI-based technology to support and, and make the application as smooth as possible and as competitive as possible against uh, every other country. And uh, these are our uh, six partner universities at the moment. So we are having both uh, applied sciences universities as well as uh, research universities and both public and private universities. So uh, this is the situation at the moment, but we are actually estimating that uh, all Finnish universities will be on board by the end of the year and, and, and similar development will be also in Estonia. And basically, uh, Harry will be sharing a little bit more about India, but also like uh, we have been building lots of uh, collaboration, not only in India during the past 12 months, but also basically anywhere else in Asia. Uh, and, and we have like uh, tens of partnership uh, agencies already all over the world. And, and we are estimating that uh, also South America, including Colombia, will be like a very, very strong market for us. And, and we have also uh, received some of the first student applications also from Africa already. So, so there's like lots of development happening everywhere, basically. But uh, please, Harry, so uh, you can share maybe a little bit more about our collaboration there in India at the moment. Yes, thank you, Thomas. Uh, yeah, so as mentioned, there's lots of opportunities all around the world and EduNation is focusing on uh, uh, countries outside of EU uh, and uh, meaning the tuition fee paying students. And uh, what we have also noticed uh, during the one year we have been operating that the tuition fees we have in Finland, they are very, very affordable and uh, quite often people, they don't even believe firsthand that is it really possible to have like a bachelor degree only with, let's say, 7,000 euros or something like that, because they are comparing that for the fees that there is in Australia and America, UK and so on. Also, the living costs in Finland are very affordable, especially as a student. So uh, these are like one of the competitive advantages that Finland has, and these were also something that uh, we noticed now when we were a couple of weeks ago in India, in a couple of the uh, cities there, that uh, affordability is one thing, uh, safety is one thing, uh, clear immigration policy is, is one thing, and those, those are some areas that we are uh, stronger actually than many of those Anglo-Saxon countries. So uh, what we are now planning with uh, uh, India and uh, what we have learned from the first trip this year there is that uh, we are now launching the EduNation India arm and that's led by Dr. Pramat Sinha who is a well-known uh, media and educational sector person there in India. Uh, he has founded few universities there and, uh, and has very good connections to everywhere. And, uh, with this help and with this team, we aim to attract thousands of students, tens of thousands of students from India to study in Finland and also in, in Estonia and maybe in the future in a few other Nordic countries. And few examples what we did during the trip was that, for example, we met with the uh, advisor for the uh, Prime Minister Modri and uh, basically we agreed that they could help to promote to send 10,000 students from India against 500 scholarships. So pretty good deal for, for Finland it would be. Also, maybe Peter can mention uh, more in detail about uh, we, we signed our, our Finland or how would, how would we say we signed an MOU uh, with uh, one state of 50 million people there, uh, about a campus of 50,000 students, which would be focusing on AI, robotics, teacher training, uh, uh, gaming, and so on. So where we have like very good spearheads in, in Finland, we, we would like all the universities to take part and provide what they have in this uh, multidisciplinary campus. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
yeah, I, I let Peter to continue and uh, give like the broader picture of, about that and also your role in, in this whole mm -hmm. thing, which we have been yeah. talking. Yes, uh, so um, yeah, that's very good uh, intro and, and uh, I think main topic actually for uh, the webinar and, and why we're doing this is that uh, we're planning now uh, to follow up uh, on the very successful uh, uh, visit that we had a uh, couple of weeks ago to India. So we visited Delhi, uh, Mumbai and uh, then uh, Vaisag, so Visnakapatnam uh, in uh, Andhra Pradesh, which is this uh, new state of 50 million uh, people on the east coast of um, India. So it's, it's kind of like uh, complete uh, opposite side of, uh, of uh, from Mumbai. So Mumbai on the west coast, then you have uh, Vaisag on the, on the east coast. But yeah, as Harry said, we had uh, a very good uh, discussion. Uh, and I think one, one of the most important one, uh, of course, on the education side that we agreed that uh, India can send 10,000 students uh, every year uh, to Finland. Uh, and also uh, we'll do the same uh, kind of on the Estonian side. So right now with uh, education, uh, the ambition is to have uh, 150,000 uh, uh, foreign students at our uh, universities uh, by 2020 and uh, 30,000 in Estonia. So uh, that is kind of like what we're working towards right now and the India activity is part of that. I mean, we are also uh, doing the same in, in uh, China. So last week we spent in, in Shanghai and Shenzhen uh, doing the exact same thing. But uh, this, uh, let's say the China angle, we can get back to later. But I think that uh, it's uh, safe to say that the interest is uh, massive. So uh, uh, we actually expect to far exceed uh, 150,000 uh, target. So uh, right now, uh, uh, China, India, we also agreed with Colombia that they will now as a pilot send uh, 100 students with full uh, $25,000 scholarship uh, to Finland and they will ramp up to 10,000 a year as well. Uh, so that uh, means uh, quite a few students uh, that uh, we need to uh, find places for uh, all over uh, Finland. But yeah, so uh, uh, we met with uh, Arvind Gupta, who is in charge of all digitalization in the Modi government and agreed on the 10,000 students that India will send. Uh, then we also spent uh, uh, two days in, uh, in uh, YSAG at uh, this partner summit. Uh, so Andhra Pradesh uh, is uh, kind of like a new state. Uh, so it uh, actually, uh, what happened is that they split uh, this one state into two parts. So that uh, uh, left kind of like Hyderabad uh, on uh, the other side and now uh, Andhra Pradesh is, is kind of like this uh, other part of that state. And uh, just as a bit of history that uh, Hyderabad was uh, uh, created or, or kind of like the success story was created by uh, um, the chief minister of Andhra Pradesh, Naidu, uh, who is uh, basically uh, now that Hyderabad got uh, left behind on the other side of the state, uh, they're now building uh, kind of like a Hyderabad 2.0, uh, so this Amarati state uh, or new city. And uh, yeah, we went there with delegation uh, from Education, from uh, several other like education companies in Finland and Estonia. And uh, we met with uh, the chief minister, uh, Naidu, we also met with uh, his top people, so many of the ministers in that state. And uh, we actually signed uh, an MOU uh, for uh, creating a new campus of uh, 50,000 students. So this is kind of like a twin campus of uh, the one that uh, we announced uh, actually the same week uh, that is going up together with uh, the Satakunan Ammatti Korkeakoulu, so some people in Pori. Uh, so for 5,000 uh, students. So we're doing a similar one for 50,000 in uh, India because again, uh, uh, it's uh, this uh, Andhra Pradesh is 10 times bigger than, than Finland. So it makes sense to have 50,000 uh, students. And the target, as Harry said, AI, robotics, then uh, teacher uh, education as well, because part of the MOU that we signed, we agreed to build this campus. So we're getting now 2.6 kilom square kilometers of uh, land for this uh, new campus. Uh, there will also be uh, kind of like a city around that, but we also agreed to 
uh, help with the basic education in the state. They have 50,000 schools that they want to raise to a much higher level. And of course, uh, their uh, uh, kind of like role model and aspiration is to be, uh, you know, as good as Finland in this area. And in fact, uh, what we asked them when we were there, uh, it happened to be a very good week because that was the same week when they had the discussion in the U.S. about uh, arming the teachers with, you know, like guns and stuff. So uh, we asked them uh, what kind of India uh, they want, what kind of Andhra Pradesh do they want? Do they want the American dream uh, with teachers carrying guns or do they want the Finnish reality where we actually have like proper schools and proper education for everybody? And uh, yeah, it was pretty clear that 100% uh, of the people actually thought that the Finnish reality sounds a bit uh, less scary than having teachers uh, shooting random students on a daily basis. So, uh, so uh, again, uh, we then agreed that uh, we will uh, come back to Andhra Pradesh and uh, we'll meet with uh, uh, Chief Minister Naidu and uh, the team there. And uh, we will uh, populate this new campus uh, with uh, fantastic uh, educational programs from uh, Finland and also Estonia. Uh, so uh, we are going to go to uh, India, uh, actually leaving Helsinki uh, on the 7th of uh, April. So there is direct flight from Helsinki to Delhi, landing uh, Sunday the 8th of April. And then uh, have uh, meetings with uh, uh, different uh, educational players in Delhi, uh, national government and also uh, probably a few of the local schools, uh, Sunday and, and Monday. Then uh, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, and Thursday, there is this Happy Cities Summit uh, in Andhra Pradesh. So uh, they are building Happy Cities because that's kind of like the smart thing to do. So they are beyond this smart city discussion. They're really uh, looking at uh, building Happy Cities. And of course, education is a key uh, component. And uh, I think that the timing for having this report come out now that Finland is the happiest city, uh, nation on the planet uh, couldn't have come at a better time. So uh, this is exactly what uh, they are looking at. And there was also a fantastic article in India, Times of India, which is kind of the biggest uh, uh, media, biggest newspaper in India that, uh, you know, uh, they uh, uh, also cover this uh, fact that Finland is the happiest uh, nation and also our uh, Nordic friends were then kind of like taking all the next uh, positions. Even Sweden figured at number nine, so uh, not too bad for Sweden, obviously. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so uh, right now uh, the plan is to then uh, spend the three days there and then uh, after that go to Mumbai and meet with uh, Tata uh, education uh, people after, uh, so basically on, on Friday. And uh, yeah, I think that uh, I would say that I have never met uh, with uh, any government anywhere where uh, you actually, they were super, super efficient. But also I had to ask some of the people if they actually work for the government because they were really uh, super, uh, uh, you know, switched on. They immediately got uh, uh, everything and, and uh, they also kind of like understand uh, that it's not just about technology, but it's uh, about applying technology to create uh, functioning uh, education, functional cities, uh, and uh, that that's uh, again what we what we will be uh, working on uh, the three days in in uh, Boisag as part of this Happy Cities Summit. So a big uh, focus on uh, how we will populate this uh, new campus uh, there, and as part of the MOU uh, that we can also kind of like share. Uh, we have uh, agreed to uh, get this campus done. Uh, we have also agreed to have a focus on uh, AI, robotics, and teacher education. There will also be a focus on games and games education together with uh, UNESCO. So UNESCO, uh, uh, Finland, Estonia, Slovakia, Colombia, Argentina, and Tunisia uh, will join in this games activity. So it will be a very global uh, games education program that we'll do actually together with uh, uh, Kajani Ammattikorkeakoulu and uh, of course uh, any other uh, school is, is more than welcome to join in on that and also uh, the same of course applies to the 
AI and robotics and any other programs that we might want to add uh, to this uh, new uh, university. Uh, also, as part of this uh, MOU, we agreed, as I said, uh, to uh, bring uh, up the level of basic education in the 50,000 schools across the state to, to a much higher level. And of course, teacher education is a big part of that. And then while we're at it, we also has, uh, agreed to work on uh, the future of uh, mobility and mobility as a service. So we'll also, as part of the delegation, have people focusing on uh, mobility. And uh, I think also their uh, education will play a, a key role. But uh, yeah, I think that uh, maybe to sum it up, that we have a fantastic opportunity now to work together with uh, the state of Andhra Pradesh and, uh, and building these uh, future uh, happy cities with uh, fantastic education. And uh, they want to model it on uh, the way we do uh, education over here. So that is uh, kind of like uh, where we're at. And there may be one thing that is actually important to add. So, uh, okay, we agreed on uh, starting with 10,000 students every year coming over to Finland. And uh, sure, uh, some of them will find their way to Estonia as well. Uh, so uh, we also had uh, meetings with uh, several financial institutions. So uh, now uh, what we have agreed is that uh, when students get uh, accepted to one of the universities uh, here in, uh, in Finland uh, or Estonia through education, they will automatically give uh, these uh, student loans and the student loan process is very, very efficient. So you will get a student loan in just three minutes. So uh, it's almost as efficient as the, uh, you know, whole application process to get uh, into a university in Finland. So uh, only like a few minutes longer because in Finland, of course, it's like instant. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so uh, that is also, uh, I think, a very important part that the financial side is, is uh, uh, kind of like sorted. And maybe one more thing that I should add that uh, we are also uh, right now uh, executing on a plan to creating uh, student housing for 50,000 additional students uh, in, uh, in Finland. So at, uh, around Finland, different uh, um, cities, Rovaniemi, Pori, Jyväskylä and, and so on. Uh, so uh, we will also be able to address the shortage of student housing that we have. Uh, over the next uh, two to three years, we will have added 50,000 new uh, student uh, apartments. So I think that's also an important part of uh, the education plan that we are executing on here. But yeah, that's pretty much what I I had as an, an update. Uh, so uh, I think we can probably like open up for, for questions and uh, and discussion. Yes, indeed. So uh, maybe Nella, can you still uh, one more time introduce that, how to do the question side, if there is anyone who doesn't yet know it? Okay, so basically there are two ways to ask questions if you want to. There is the question and answer thing where you can just type questions that you want to ask. But you can also just raise your hand and we can unmute you. So you can ask live if you have something, if you want to discuss something. It'd be Peter, Harry, or Thomas. So two ways to do it. And of course, also the chat function as well. You can ask questions there too, just uh, to make sure that it's to all panelists or all panelists and attendees. So everybody can see, see the question you have asked. Yeah, and, and maybe one thing uh, also that, uh, uh, you know, like right now, if you look at uh, the discussions that we've had uh, back here in, in Finland with uh, kind of like all of you uh, and, uh, you know, the different universities, different uh, uh, universities of applied sciences. Uh, so uh, right now, uh, I think that there is uh, a very good uh, readiness to accept uh, more uh, international students, but uh, maybe not, you know, like the thousands uh, uh, per unit uh, immediately. 
Uh, and this is also why uh, we decided to kind of like, uh, create the 5,000 student unit uh, in Pori at uh, uh, SAMC. Uh, so that is something that uh, this year will accept uh, maybe like a hundred or a few hundred students. Uh, next year it will already ramp up to the thousands. And uh, in many of the discussions that we've had uh, now is, is that we have actually uh, set up a system where we can sell the current, uh, you know, different programs. Not all of them, uh, as we all know, are available in English, but once we have, uh, you know, like 30 uh, or 60, whatever the trigger is, students, we can then uh, uh, basically start offering that in English as well. So uh, uh, we're uh, improving the readiness to uh, receive kind of like uh, students at scale. But uh, it, of course, means that it's not just about the student housing and like these kind of things that need to be addressed. We will also need more resources on the teaching side uh, to cope with uh, the influx of students from, from India, from China, from uh, Latin America and uh, in the future Africa as well. So, uh, yeah, we'll need to work together to make this happen. Okay, it seems Annika has a question, or did you have? I will now unmute you, so you can talk if you have something to ask. Now just a second, yeah. Okay, okay do, now we do, should be okay. Do you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for this invitation. I I was going to ask about the if 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 we go to India, if I come with you to India, uh, what is the main focus there? Because it, uh, I understand that that these um, agreements with the ten thousand and and fifty thousand and and so on. So it's it's between you. Uh, we have, if I I talk from Arkada side. Uh, we have three bachelor degrees in English now, and, and we have uh, three, four in master programs. But we are talking about increasing, and, and what we are interested in is what kind of profiles and, and what kind of, of, of programs would be the interesting ones. Uh, from besides this that we, we have now and and I'm wondering that what is the focus of this trip is it just like on, on, on yeah yes so uh, uh, yeah so I think that uh, first uh, the programs that you have already are all uh, very interesting mm. so that that's you know again when we're talking about if you look at all of India, you know, billion plus people. Uh, there's in their schools. They currently have 260 million students. Uh, there are 20, 22,000 colleges yeah. in India. So uh, the scale is, uh, you know, it's like a China scale, mm. and uh, it just happens to be right next door. Uh, so it's kind of like one of our neighboring countries. We are the closest neighbor of India in Europe, just like we're the closest neighbor of China. Uh, in Europe, uh, so uh, uh, we can expect uh, very, very big interest. And uh, I think also uh, we did several presentations at uh, the schools uh, when we were there. And uh, we always uh, had uh, massive interest in studying in Finland. So uh, I think that, uh, and the same thing we've seen in China and everywhere, that it's just a matter of uh, increasing the awareness. Mm -hmm. So right now, uh, uh, they are, you know, and this is globally that people are aware of the fact that you can study in the U.S., in Australia, in Canada, and, uh, and you know, like all of that. But they're not, uh, you know, Finland is not, uh, or Estonia is not like an obvious destination. So uh, part of this is actually uh, to create uh, more awareness and hence more demand. And I think that uh, that's again uh, where uh, we really uh, would like to work together so uh, also that we can show that hey these are uh, some of the schools and some of the people who are, are doing this back in Finland mm -hmm. and then uh, also I think one uh, uh, important thing here is that it's also a great opportunity for you to see the reality on the ground 
in Delhi, in uh, Mumbai, in Vaisag. Uh, so I think that that is also important. But then uh, if you look at this uh, new university that we are building, uh, the idea there is actually that, uh, for example, now we have agreed uh, with uh, the people from Kajani, so from Comc, uh, that uh, they will do a summer school around games. And we will do that actually in Vaisag as uh, a way to recruit people for the games program in Kajani. And uh, we will uh, uh, increase the number of people in the games program. So, I mean, again, as an example, that currently it's about 100 people, we'll increase it to two, then 300 and beyond, uh, because there is a huge shortage of people in, in that uh, field. There's also actually a huge shortage of uh, people in games, if you look at like uh, uh, all of India. Mm -hmm. So that is kind of like one, one example. But uh, also, uh, I think that this is an opportunity for Arcada, uh, for uh, any of the uh, schools from Finland, from Estonia, to uh, start also offering uh, programs in India, in this case in uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh. Uh, and I, I think that this is something that, uh, again, uh, we would like to have the discussions now during this trip about doing, doing that. Because we can now, uh, with this uh, new campus of for 50,000 people, we can offer a platform for that. Uh, also, the campus, obviously, it's not there, it's not built. It will take, uh, you know, like uh, two years or something like that to have it uh, at, fu at full scale with the 50,000 students. But uh, again, uh, I think uh, we want to involve all of you very early and start uh, doing this uh, kind of like right now. But it, it is something that we're executing at significant scale. So uh, uh, the last part of your like question about which courses and what is of interest, uh, I think the best way to find out is to join the trip and ask the people mm -hmm. there locally because they actually know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, and that's that's also why why this is interesting because I think it's it's good to to hear and to know that when we start building something new, it's something that somebody really wants and, and needs. So, Absolutely. so yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. And, and uh, I mean, we have the, the AI is, is, is a, a strong thing at, at Arcada. We, we have mm -hmm. lots of, of, of things going on. So the, therefore also it's, it's a bit interesting actually. So. Very good. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll do it. So yeah, so uh, I think that uh, one, one thing here that, uh, again, I mean, we decided to lead with like AI and robotics because those are like uh, hot topics and uh, we ha happen to have uh, some of the best, uh, uh, let's say, experts and the best programs uh, anywhere uh, here in Finland uh, when it comes to AI and robotics. So that was kind of like one of the kind of like leads and that was very kind of like easy to make happen. But I think that there are many, many other programs where we can do exactly the same. So, uh, so that's something that is very important. And we already met uh, when we were there last with uh, many of the universities and uh, also uh, Pramat Singha that we're working with. Uh, and I Harry already said that uh, he set up several of the uh, local universities. He's also now uh, advisor to the uh, government in Andhra Pradesh to set up uh, some of the schools there also working with us on this new university. So I, I think that there is uh, a lot of opportunity to, to kind of like learn and then make sure that we have uh, the right programs. And I think one thing here is that we don't expect, you know, like this year that we will have thousands and thousands of students. Uh, we'll have, uh, you know, maybe uh, a few thousand uh, already this year, but next year is really kind of like the big target. So that's when we're going to have uh, tens of thousands of students uh, applying and hopefully getting accepted to the uh, universities uh, here in Finland and in Estonia. So this is uh, a part of getting all of us ready to accept, uh, you know, this uh, much bigger influx of uh, foreign students. So uh, of course we need to uh, we need time uh, to get uh, ready. You can't like accept, you know, like a thousand new students to Arcada as an example without you know, like a bit of planning and a bit of resourcing. That's true. Uh, though we, we are we are getting five hundred new new uh, or we are getting new houses and and accommodation for five hundred new students. So so <laughs> we are. It's a good start. Students. Start. 
Yeah, so we'll we'll take uh, we'll take you up on that. So the five hundred will uh, populate. So uh, we can do that uh, basically with uh, students from Colombia and India and China. Yeah. Well, can perhaps you? not perhaps not next year yet. But <laughs> ah, okay. I was actually going to suggest that uh, they start in September. <laughs> okay, and I could also add to what uh, what Peter said that we also made like uh, many local uh, agencies in Indian market. So, um, for example, on this one street where we have a uh, one very good partner agent, they had seventy eight partner uh, seventy eight agencies there, and only in uh, the city of Hyderabad there was more than three hundred agents. So there's probably more than 10,000 agents in India. So this is very much like agent related market and all the students rely on agencies when they go to decide to study abroad. So this one that we are now working together with, they have sent 7,000 students to European countries during their history already and few also to Finland uh, back in the days. But uh, the problem has been that it has been too difficult to uh, apply and the short application period and, and so forth. But uh, what they also mentioned to us, like related to, to Arkada, that uh, they noticed that, okay, hey, you have this kind of program that big data analytics, we could immediately get you 30 students for the uh, already in the autumn semester from this one agency. This is what they promised. But it means that the application procedure should be and the requirements uh, on that level that we can compete with the other countries. And for example, there has been some problems that if, uh, let's say, SAT test is required, it might be that the deadline for making SAT for this year is already passed. So it's kind of impossible then to apply for the autumn semester. So also for these reasons, we need to introduce the AI-enabled uh, entrance exam, which make it, uh, which can be validated as one of the ways how to apply to the Finnish universities and University of Appliance Sciences. Uh, there was also some other questions we could uh, pick from from Helly from uh, saying, okay, uh, yeah, we are talking about both all different kind of programs, and what was clear also on our trip to India that many people were asking for the summer programs, so they would be very very interested in coming for a couple of weeks to Finland and really feel how it is to live and study here, and then finally, of course, apply to the degree degree programs. Uh, and, uh, this same stuff has been happening basically everywhere. Also today here in Thailand, when I met some students, they said that, yeah, is there some summer programs available? And same in, same in China last week and so on. And uh, yeah, I still want to point out that uh, we wish that many, uh, many participants from different universities and University of Applied Sciences would be taking part. So initially mm -hmm. Peter met uh, some of them already and they approved that they want to join us and part of uh, the reason for having this kind of webinar is also now to uh, get more people join for our delegation visit there. Mm -hmm. Some uh, questions also related to Estonian partners and uh, the numbers from there. And I guess this is something we can discuss with, with Vahur, who we know, who we know personally in a, in a separate discussion as well. But discussions are going on and we have good connections on, on, on the principal level and also to minister level. So this helps, helps to open up the game also in Estonia. One thing uh, more to add, uh, mm, we also met like parents. Parents are obviously like big decision makers, especially when we are talking about bachelor level undergraduate degrees. And in India, there is like 1.5 million schools. And some of those schools are actually like uh, private owned, very high level elite schools. And 90% of their students go to study abroad. And usually they go to America, Australia and so on. But now, actually the number of American students, uh, Indian students going to America was decreasing 26% last year. Uh, so now countries like UK and France are heavily competing of this portion. And uh, just this week there was like the prime minister visits to India and they signed MOUs. And, uh, and so this 
just shows that this needs to be kind of a national level project and we need to get the support from the minister level and then we are of course together with the universities the ones who are making the job on the ground but uh, yeah that's, and, and that's what we are looking for yeah and to add to that so so uh, yes uh, i think uh, very important to note that uh, macron was there uh, this week in india and uh, they uh, had also the ministers of education from france and uh, india they signed an agreement that they uh, the degrees of Indian uh, universities are now also kind of like valid in France and the other way around. So uh, France is very, very serious now about uh, uh, taking over uh, this kind of like uh, spot left by uh, the US. And uh, I think that we have, of course, a, a small advantage uh, here that unlike Macron, not everybody in France speaks English and uh, not every Indian person wants to learn French. So uh, again, uh, we need to make uh, sure that we are also very serious about this. So we have already talked to Oli Pekka Heinonen and we will also talk to, to Sonny and uh, kind of like the Ministry of Education to make sure that we get appropriate uh, support. But uh, the work uh, really needs to be done as we all know on the ground. So uh, uh, without uh, the fantastic universities uh, here in, in Finland and also in Estonia, uh, we can't make this happen. So. We need to work on this uh, together and uh, again uh, we need to be ready to accept uh, students at scale. Yes, very good and it's, it's also important, it's not like just a huge opportunity for all of us to uh, do things in India, to visit India, uh, to participate to this delegation, but actually also uh, local people there in India are very much welcoming us to come there. And it's very important that um, Indian people also meet us like as often as, and as much as, as possible. Basically, it's pretty much as a requirement that uh, not only edunation visits there, but also universities, our government and everybody to go there, do this kind of delegation trips and, and, and generate the awareness of Finland and Estonia to, to be able to be like a very uh, kind of like attractive study abroad destination. Basically in India, if you start talking about our study possibilities, for example, in Finland, uh, all those people get immediately very interested in coming to Finland. But the market is not only that, we really need to generate it there. There's more than a billion people and, 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 and we need to let everybody basically know about the opportunity and then it's just like a gets up a lot of show. So it, it, when, when it will be opening up. There's a massive flow of students coming to Finland very quickly then. So, so that's what we are doing, doing there. And, and there's like uh, huge possibilities for everyone. Mm. And one thing to good to remember when we are talking about these very big numbers, uh, it is that if we put that on the scale of that, let's say 10,000 students from India comes to Finland, it would be the same per capita if 40 people would leave from Finland to India. So in that sense, it doesn't sound that much anymore. And there is a huge, huge demand, like it's a organically growing market, more, more students going abroad and more students going to higher education and uh, less students going to America and Australia and so on. So it's a very good chance now for all of us. Okay, uh, more questions. yeah, more questions, shoot us. <laughs> it sounds that uh, we have probably covered everything, have happy people online, hopefully. Yeah, my, my only questions is then uh, more of, of the, the details of, of but, but I, I, I guess that that can can come in in a later stage of, or or is there any 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 details yes so, to, uh, about the trip that that yes. one should know now yeah I think that uh, the most important thing is that you should apply for your visa to India if you don't have it yet you should apply like now 
Okay. Uh, you can do that online, or then if you want to have a multiple entry, you know, more than two entries, uh, then uh, you need to uh, visit the embassy. Uh, so uh, it, it really kind of depends on what you need. But I think that is uh, one of the practicalities that uh, makes sense to take care of, uh, you know, right away. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the current, the plan is to, uh, you know, for the people based in, uh, in Helsinki or here in Finland, uh, is to take the flight the 7th uh, uh, Saturday and land in Delhi. So Helsinki, Delhi on Saturday evening, landing in uh, Delhi Sunday morning, spend Sunday and Monday in uh, Delhi uh, evening flight. And we will share the flight details and everything. Uh, take the uh, evening flight to Vaisag, spend Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday in Vaisag. So that's like a city in Andhra Pradesh. And then uh, Friday and Saturday in uh, Mumbai, and then taking the flight uh, Saturday uh, or sun Sunday morning, I guess, uh, from uh, Delhi to Helsinki. So that is kind of like the logistics. So uh, basically, blocking uh, a complete week uh, for this. Yeah. Good, thank you. Yes, and obviously we are still uh, kind of there uh, on a, from Tuesday to Thursday in Andhra, pra Andhra Pradesh, uh, which is about the happy cities. And I think we are hosted by the Chief Minister Naidu. Yeah, yeah so we have, uh, yeah, so uh, we met with, uh, with uh, Chief Minister Naidu when we were there and uh, we had a very good uh, uh, kind of reception. And that's also why we, you know, like got the MOU uh, created in like record time. Uh, but also we have now several uh, contacts in the uh, Andhra Pradesh, uh, you know, government, and we've been very happy with the Kalak support. So we have like a program office on both sides now to drive the whole uh, uh, initiative uh, forward. So uh, you can expect uh, quite a few, you know, uh, further like India trips. And we, we will also, uh, uh, in the next few months, we will host uh, the... Uh, Andhra Pradesh government here in, in Finland and uh, hopefully also in Estonia. So uh, that is something that we are working on. And uh, I think that uh, uh, we are off to a very, very good start. But uh, of course, this is when the work uh, begins. And uh, again, uh, uh, we will need uh, a lot of uh, uh, collaboration uh, between all of us. And uh, I think, again, this uh, webinar now is also God, it's a good start, but uh, there's a lot more that we need to do. And actually, one thing that I should mention that for the people here in, in Finland and in Helsinki, that we will have a, a get-together on Saturday uh, this weekend at 2 o'clock at uh, the Cable Factory at We Plus, where we'll look at uh, more details uh, for this trip. And I think that we will also broadcast that online. So uh, for people who can't join us in Helsinki, uh, Saturday afternoon at two at the We Plus at the Cable Factory. You can also uh, participate online uh, if you have uh, a moment to spare during the weekend. But uh, on Saturday we will go into more detail on on everything. Yes, and this is this Saturday for for March. This yes. is becoming Saturday, seventeenth. So two two p.m. Cable Factory, close to where the ferry from Tallinn arrives. So. Uh, very easy also for our Estonian friends to join us. And Peter, what is your realistic uh, uh, estimation of the number of participants for the becoming April trip? I, I think that we will have uh, between 20 and 30 uh, people joining us on this trip. Uh, so uh, it, it's uh, going to be like significant. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a good start. Uh, and I think that uh, the nice thing here is that we have already prepared like the ground in in India, so uh, both Delhi and uh, in uh, Vaisag and Mumbai, and we have uh, kind of like right level of uh, contacts uh, there, so we can actually uh, agree and make things happen uh, there. So I think that's something that is very important. Exactly. So uh, feel free to spread the word uh, about. India opportunity and also about the becoming trip and uh, we also would like to have some uh, media publicity of the trip so feel free also to invite 
if you are like a university representative, why not taking uh, some students with you who are making stories from there to media and, uh, and uh, different uh, blog posts and everything. So this is now much needed that we can get the word out. Yeah, it's a fantastic opportunity and I believe that India is definitely one of those lowest hanging fruits for anybody interested in education export or university collaboration or, or student mobility. So I highly encourage to join this delegation trip in April. Yeah, and, and maybe also to add to that, that uh, yes, India is a fantastic opportunity. We also have a very similar situation now in China. And uh, I think that uh, uh, we will get uh, many, many more uh, international students than what we are um, kind of like uh, expecting currently. I think that's uh, very, very clear from all the discussions. And that was very clear last week. Uh, we were in, in Shanghai, uh, Olli Pekka Heinonen from the National like, Board of Education was also there with, uh, with kind of like an official delegation. So uh, we, we had, uh, fantastic discussion with uh, all the key players and, and just Shanghai obviously is like 25 million people, lots of students. So we visited many of the local high schools and uh, I think that there is uh, a massive uh, demand for uh, studying in Finland and uh, the brand of uh, Finland when it comes to education right now is really fantastic. So uh, uh, I think that uh, China right now we've allocated only 60,000 students, but uh, they're already uh, asking if we can apply uh, or uh, approve a few more than 60,000. Uh, so I think that we'll we need to look at that. But currently it's like 2,000 for uh, for kind of like every province. So uh, we'll we're starting with that. But I, I think that there are many provinces in China who want to have uh, many many more than just 2,000 students from their province studying in Finland, and. Uh, and the nice thing is also that uh, our pricing, uh, you know, at the universities here in Finland is very, very affordable. In fact, when we went to the Beijing uh, International uh, School Expo in January, it was almost impossible uh, to make, uh, you know, the high schools and uh, those uh, uh, parents and students that were attending that uh, trying to explain the cost of studying in Finland. Uh, they couldn't believe that it's uh, less expensive to study at university in Finland and high school in Beijing. So uh, that is something that uh, we don't always realize here in Finland uh, either that our prices are super affordable. And I think also uh, now looking at like India, the feedback that we constantly got was that uh, Finland is so much closer than, uh, you know, say uh, the US or Australia. I mean, uh, Delhi to Sydney is uh, 12 hours and Delhi to Helsinki is six hours. So it's much shorter flight and uh, also uh, uh, it's much safer. So the parents really love the fact that uh, they don't have to send their, uh, you know, children to, for example, Chicago, which, uh, you know, we hear every day, you know, our friend Trump uh, sharing that it's like a war zone and they need to call in the army and they're shooting random people in the streets. So here in Finland, the uh, security is uh, very good and uh, much appreciated. And then, of course, uh, we have air you can breathe. Uh, the pollution in both India and China is, is pretty bad. So, uh, of course, uh, coming here to Finland and having being able to breathe outside without wearing a mask is a big plus. So uh, we can expect to see uh, massive demand uh, going forward. So. Uh, this trip is uh, one step in that process, you know, getting all of us ready to, uh, you know, scale and, and accepting more students. And also, uh, I think what is very nice for all the universities here in Finland that uh, you will receive like massive additional funding. I mean, the AI and uh, robotics campus in Finland is adding, uh, in Pori is adding 50 million uh, to the budget there. And uh, that's... Uh, more than the entire budget for uh, the Samk uh, uh, school right now. So it, it's not uh, um, super bad, let's put it this way. Great. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. I guess if no comments anymore, we are, uh, we are uh, ready to finish this. Uh, let's have this as a good start and uh, for uh, conquering 
India and uh, transforming uh, it to a Findia in the very near future. This is something we want to do and let's do this together.